Hello and welcome to this video about if, else and else if. Our code is quite boring, only printing out some text and perhaps getting some input and some little other things. Let's change that around and let our computer make some choices. So let's start off by looking at a bit of an if's anatomy. So for an if statement you will use the following. If condition do this. This is quite easy. It will basically check the condition, error out of the code, if the condition evaluates to true. A condition, for who you don't know, is a statement that can be true or false. But now for something a bit harder. This condition part, just feeding in the word condition, unfortunately won't quite work. So we have six operators we can use here. Let's look at them. So first up is the equals equals operator. This will check if the part on the left equals the part on the right. The part on the left can be any data type just about, and the part on the right can also be just about any data type. One very important thing to note for this operator is that you use two equals signs. Otherwise your computer may think you are trying to set a variable equal to something and that would result in some pretty bad errors. So let's try and avoid that. So now we have the greater than and less than sign. Just like in maths, these are the arrow to the left and arrow to the right operating signs. I don't think I'll need to explain a lot about these, but if you want an explanation, let me know down in the comments and I'll look into that. Now we have the greater than or equal operator and the less than or equal operator. These are basically the same as the last one, the less than and greater than operators, but these will also evaluate to true if the numbers are equal to each other. So for example, five is not less than five, but five is equal to each other. So five is less than or equal to five will evaluate to true because it's not less than, but it is equal to five. So now let's move on to else. It's pretty easy. Basically, else is something you put after your if, or else if, but we'll continue to that later. This code will basically only run if the above if, or else if for that matter, is false. AKA, if the code in the previous if or else if was not run, this code will run. And if it was run, it will just give over the else and do absolutely nothing with it. Now we have arrived at our final piece for today, the else if condition. You will have to put this below an if, and when this if is true, this won't even be looked at, it will just be skipped over, just like the else. But if the above if is false, or else if for that matter, the condition in here will be checked. So, imagine we'd have an if statement with 5 is less than 5, and then an else if 5 is less than or equal to 5, and then an else. Now, what will be run? So if you just said the else if statement, you are completely correct. Because the if statement 5 is less than 5, no, that just evaluates to false. And the else if statement 5 is less than or equal to 5, that of course evaluates to true. So anyway, I hope this video helped you. If it did, please consider leaving a like or even subscribing. If you didn't like this video, please tell me why down in the comments and tell me what I should change to make you like it. If you really want to dislike it, you can do it, I guess. So anyway, I hope to see you in another video. And until then, bye.